Welcome everybody. We are on record and um, that is the very first session of uh, our class, Software Quality Assurance class. And um, first of all, I have to thank all of you for being with us uh, today. And I see over 300 people uh, in the virtual classroom. And probably there are going to be uh, many more uh, watching the recording of the session because not everybody can, can come. So it, it is an honor and I really appreciate your trust. And uh, you know, I know you have lots of things to do. And um, so you are committing you know, some time to be here in the class. And some of you already uh, are students, so they paid tuition. Uh, some of you are not, they are looking at, at the class. Uh, first three sessions are, are a free trial. So you are welcome to kind of to be with us, to get an idea what that class about, to put it on yourself, uh, to decide if you want to join. And uh, um, you will see today how, how the whole thing is working. So first of all, I will tell you the story. Uh, second, uh, you will ask questions, so we'll have time for questions. And um, um, I am changing the way we are teaching that class. We started the, the, the online program in 2011. So the, the school we started in 1994. So we are the very first software uh, testing school in the world. And um, that online program we started in 2011. And uh, I'm trying to make some changes uh, all the time. And uh, so I expect you to help me with those changes. So I need your opinion. Uh, so that uh, that time, September 6 uh, of 2022 class, um, will start with uh, less uh, load uh, in, in um, terms of how much information I put on you right away uh, and um, how much homework you, you're going to do. So we will start in a slower mode um, to get you an idea of, uh, to give you time basically, to give you more time to, to better understand where you are. So I changed some uh, presentations and I changed certain things. And again, I expect you to help me with that. Um, for the first three sessions, we do not expect you to uh, prepare anything prior to the session. We used to ask you to do homework before you come to the class, but and it will be there eventually. But for the first three sessions, we do not want you to do anything before the class. We do want you to do something after the class, and uh, we will look at that. So let me um, show you how it is going to work. Uh, so far, we will work with the online home, online home page because at some point you will get your own page after you make your decision and uh, become a student. So you will have something like that. So that is the page for the class which just finished, uh, the May 9th class. We have lots of things here, sessions, projects, and so on. So you will have pretty much same page with few um, deviations. But so far, for the first three sessions, that is the page we use. And if you look at the recording, let's say session one, um, that is the recording of uh, session one for previous class, May 9th class. So you have video here and you have notes. Notes is something I type in uh, note patterns and post here. Um, for your session, we will have video here and we will have notes here. And notes I keep in notepad file, so it do doesn't come empty. So it has certain thing inside. And that is what we're going to look at uh, before we begin. So here is the school website. Um, it is not portnov.com, it is portnov.net. So portnov.com is a website for the campus, which is in that same building where I am right now in Sunnyvale, California. But Campus has different programs and we are, we are different 
uh, organization. So we are technically two different organizations, even though we are uh, coming uh, from same uh, roots. Yeah. Um, then uh, I would ask you to uh, subscribe to uh, our Instagram and YouTube uh, accounts so you can stay in touch. Um, and here is your online home page, online home page, which we use for the first three trial sessions. Good. Here is your schedule. Um, I have a separate link for you, but honestly, on the home, uh, online home page, you have that link right here. Uh, remember, a schedule will change because certain things we don't know about yet. Uh, it might be something related to me, to our teachers, to uh, certain circumstances we, which we cannot you know, envision so far. Um, anytime there is a change to the schedule, it's right here. Yeah, you, you go there and you look at the schedule. It is always current. Whatever teachers might tell you or uh, whatever I might tell you, guys, um it might change it might change so here is the most most reliable way of uh, figuring out wh where we are today so keep going uh, but just just in case just in case so we give you the we give you the link um course payment link um it says no rush first three sessions as i told you first three sessions are um a trial and uh, you i mean we really want you to make the conscious decision so we do not we are not pushing you we are not saying do it faster sooner or whatever no, not really we want you to make the conscious decision and here is the web page where um you you can do the payment and we already have let me let me show you okay payment um yeah, and there is a green button here on the online home page. There is a green button here, so which brings you to that to that page. When we go to Skype, we have several ch chats here. One is September 6, 2022 trial. That is where, uh, well, most of you are supposed to be at the moment. So 359 people, pretty good. Then we have. Uh, Mm, trial informal. Trial informal is to be used in between sessions. In between sessions, and the the main chat, the trial chat, is to be used only when we are in session. Okay, I do not want to jump in between three, four different chats. You know, when when we are in in the class. Now, uh, extra September six extra means. People who already took the class before, and we have unlimited uh, uh, auditing policy, so you can repeat the class as many times as, as you want for the rest of your life. Actually, hopefully you, you don't need that, but if you want to, it's it's available. And you can see we have over 112 people who, at the moment, are saying they want to uh, to repeat the class. Guys, who, whoever is in the extra chat, say yes if you are in the class right now because my my suspicion is that out of 112 people uh, maybe 10 or 15 are actually present uh, because or maybe because of the uh first session so we have more people uh, and they are enthusiastic but okay okay uh some people just want to repeat some people didn't finish the previous class because of whatever circumstances yeah we've got we've got Quite a few, actually. Wow. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. And overall, we have 333 at the moment. Good. Good. Very good. And then uh, um, I asked you not to write anything in the informal chat, guys. My instruction is so straightforward and so simple. Uh, I would really, uh, I don't know what to say ask you not to do that okay do not violate the rules i just told you that chat is not to be used when we are in the class and now it is jumping on my screen it makes me really unhappy 
Okay. Uh, software testing profession, I can tell you, uh, overall is about being able to follow the instruction precisely. Okay. So you are given an instruction. Um, so you follow. That's it. That is the end of story. Okay. Um, go back to to the payment. So we have like ah, I didn't tell you. We have final chat. That is final. You can see here over 100 people who already paid for the class. So for whatever reason, reason they decided, you know, at earlier stage, uh, they want that class. Some people have reasons. I mean, they have friends or spouses or whoever who graduated from that program. So they made their decision. So out of 300, whatever, um, 60, 50, 50, 60 people, so 100 already are. Uh, the students and I did send them the link, but honestly, well, it's okay. It's okay. Since we have a big group here, it's okay. But because normally I would rather see them in the uh, um, September trial. Okay, here, keep going. So no rush. Okay, we really want motivated people who who know what they want. We don't want to deal with those who are in between and, and so on. Moreover, guys, if you when you pay the tuition, uh, as there is no way back, means you can repeat the class, but you cannot uh, get the money back. It is a, it, uh, what we offer you is a kind of electronic goods, so you can copy um, pretty much all all we have. Um, you know, after you get access to the system, so think twice, think twice. Um, um, now, registration. Um, here is the link for registration, but please do not register unless you decided to become a student and pay the tuition. There is no need to register if you do not join the program. Okay, There is no value in registration. You just uh, trash our database. We don't want that. If you decide to, to pay the tuition, then you will create an account here, you will register, and then you will make the payment. Uh, after you register, guys, after you register and get access to the, to, to the resources, you will have access to all the resources we have, all the previous uh, classes, all the future classes, and that is the link to your class of September 6th. So first of all, you need uh, the uh, your account. You have to register. Then you, your account gets authorized, and you will have access to that page. With just one little issue, the page is not there yet. I have to, I have to create it, and I will do it in couple within a couple of days. Uh, so far, we are we are using the we are using the um, uh, where is it yeah. online home page. Yeah. So you do, you don't need the class page yet. And uh, so I already told you about the chat. So we have final, final informal trial uh, because they're going to be um, so far we are using trial chat, but after you actually pay the tuition, you will have uh, not the trial, but uh, final chat. We call it final and extra for those who uh, are repeating the class. So we have four different types of, uh, of chats. Now, certain rules of using the chat so it, it our chats are not social networks okay they are not for chatting uh, uh it's about not not uh, for spamming or discussing unrelated issues chats are the property of the school so what we discuss there is just the uh, class related issues homework technical issues and um, really, it's not about for it's not for socializing at all. Okay, but each and every time you write something to the chat with 300 people in it, you distract 300 people. So no distraction, and that is why the main chat we use only while in a class. Okay, so you don't want to bother. We, we don't want anybody to bother um, our students. So no spam, no distractions, no smiles, okay, no thanks, no pictures, uh, no garbage here, okay. Think about how many people you distract, giving them zero information. 
it is not the, the way to go. Uh, no links to third party resources without my approval. You might find something on the web. Uh, and in your mind, it is a um, useful resource which you want to share with others. You cannot do that without my approval. Uh, you understand me? You cannot do that without my approval. Uh, if you do that without my approval, I will remove you from the chat, so you don't you don't uh, do that anymore. Okay. So we have very strict rule on that stuff. I do not want you to uh, distract or to you know hurt anybody in that class. So you have no competence, no expertise in sharing information or recommending any information. You give it to me, if it is a valuable thing, I will do it. Uh, no soliciting. Um, for example, you want, uh, you live in Boston and uh, you want to create a chat uh, or maybe a Telegram group for uh, those in that class who live in Boston. You cannot solicit people in, in my chats, okay? It is again. It is not a social network where um, everybody has access to everybody. You are given uh, the opportunity to be in the chat. You are not given the opportunity to use the chat to solicit anything from anybody. If you want to do something, you contact me, and as long as there is a reasonable kind of uh, activity, I will support it. I will support it, obviously. But uh, nothing is uh, happening there, or should be happening there, um, kind of without my approval. Okay, and we do that, guys. I'm, I'm not a dictator by nature. I, I do that to protect other people, the students, the people who trust us, who come, who pay the money, and who trust me in doing what's uh, the best uh, to them. That is my responsibility to all the people in that class, so nobody hurts them. Okay, I have to make sure. Okay, um, any questions at the moment? And, and again, uh, the questions should be coming in September 6 trial class or in the extra class if you are in the extra, if you are repeating the class. Any questions so far? Okay, guys, if you have, oh no, some, some people are typing, okay. Well, if you are good, don't write, don't write anything. So because you you, you made me to, to go there with no reason, don't write anything. If you have an issue or something, something to address, I'll, I will appreciate that. But mm -hmm. which chat can we use for questions? Right now, we are in the class. So you are using that same chat you can see on, on my screen. That chat is to be used when we are in session. In between sessions, you go to, you go to uh, trial informal here, where people are still uh, you know, doing something. It's OK. Um, that is. That one is in between classes, and that is one. That one is when we are in the class. Until what date do I need to pay? If I'm sure, um, most most of the people would pay, or we expect them to pay before uh, session four begins. So if you look at the schedule, session four, if we have Tuesday today, so session four will be will happen on. Uh, 15th, uh, September 15th at 6 p.m. California time. So if you want to pay, I would suggest you do that at least one hour before this, the class begins because we might not be able uh, to process your payment, you know, in a kind of uh, fast enough, uh, you know, manner promptly. Okay. Um, I had inter interruptions and how now no audio at all 
I don't know what to say. I don't have a final chat yet, or you created after trial session. Final chat, final informal definitely is not there. Definitely is not there. Uh, I can create it after the class. Yeah, if you if you want to uh, kind of communicate in the final group, definitely definitely it is a good idea. Just remind me, please, not not in the chat, but but write to me personally. Say, Michael, we need the uh, informal chat in the final kind of uh, stage. Good, it, it's a good idea. Um, what is the tuition for this course? Time of classes will always be the same. The time time is uh, going to be the same. Um, now, when we talk about uh, tuition, so guys, we have a page. Is it here? No. Um, uh huh. Okay, let's go to portnov.net. Let's go to portnov.net. Mm. And here mm, in the very menu, you will see FAQ here. Okay, we will go over that FAQ. I will spend a, a minute. Um, so it says online USA class FAQ. Uh, European class FAQ. We start European class on October 24th. Okay, use another link. So there is another FAQ for European class. So, and it says basics of the program. So, first three sessions are a trial, no charge to participate. After three sessions, you decide if you want to continue. <clears throat> um, those who stay will pay 1500 by credit card, PayPal, mailing a check, whatever. Tuition, okay, guys, pay attention. Tuition is non refundable. Uh, all the sessions are recorded in case you miss a session or want to repeat the session. Um, we are using go to webinar tool to run the sessions no installation needed there are a couple of modules in the program i will uh, talk about those later on um uh, test automation has a slightly different schedule because of the uh, teacher uh, teacher's schedule so it starts not uh, at 6 p.m it starts at 7 p.m uh, pacific standard time california time so from uh, seven to nine, normally it is from uh, six to eight or six to seven, uh, and it is Wednesday. So we have four, at some point you will have four sessions a week. We start with uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then eventually we will get automation on Wednesdays. You will, you, you might look at the schedule, you have the schedule. Okay, uh, for all other modules, we have three live sessions a week. Uh, six seven or six eight okay so um, overall it's 100 hours uh, normally it's more because guys it's it's difficult to stop me so i have 24 hours uh with you and uh, uh, god knows it might easily be 35 to start the session teacher sends a link to the group ch group chat in skype yeah we, we did it today you click on the link and there will be there are going to be new window opening with teacher screen inside uh, beside besides live recorded 100 hours we have enormous li library huge library with god knows how many things in it so i will i will show you that library uh before we finish session three uh, we will we take care of resumes, certificates, references, projects, and blah blah blah. And um, so, anytime you have a basic kind of question, go here, or at least read it once. Okay, so you you understand better um, where we are, guys. If you notice some inconsistencies or things to be fixed, um, please. Uh, let me know. Let me know. We, we appreciate help of that kind. Um, okay, so the question was uh, about payments. Mm. Um, if you are in US and Canada, uh, it is 1500. We, we might have certain um, considerations for people who live in uh, countries of former Soviet Union. 
so Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and then there are some differences um, based on where exactly uh, the, the folks are planning to look for a job. For example, if you look for a job in countries of former Soviet Union, so it's one story and you have you have a discount. If you look for a job in uh, planning to look for a job in Europe, United States, Canada, and so on, so uh, we, we provide more work. Uh, so we do many other things with you, which we do not do when people go to another market. So there is a discount for you know for those who are uh, planning to be on local markets in countries of former Soviet Union. Time of classes will always be the same. It always will be the same. How to get link for final chat if I already paid? Uh, you uh, write to Irina yeah, at Portnov um, online, and she, she will put you there. Um, and if I will not be able to finish the class, is it possible to retake the class? Absolutely. I mean, on unlimited basis. Do I need to pay for that? No. For Europe, will you have exactly the same course? Uh, slightly different. Slightly di Go to FAQ for uh, European schedule. You will see that. Slightly different. Uh, it has some support in Russian. And um, instead of 20 hours of automation, we will use those 20 hours uh, to kind of reinforce in Russian what we learned, just learned in English. So slightly different. but you will have access to uh, recordings of normal classes, uh, or regular classes. So you can get that stuff in um, in recorded format. So you're not going to miss that information. Will be the exam after finishing the course. We call it, uh, we call it a clearance, interview clearance. Means um, we will issue the certificate. I mean, there is no problem with issuing the certificate. We do not need any exam. But if you want to go, if, if you want us to take care of your resume, and uh, so then we want you to go um, through clearance. And clearance is the uh, first; it is written. We give you a couple of questions. Um, I'll show you. Portnov.net. Just twelve questions, guys. Twelve questions, and uh, so. Um, we know we know what companies are asking uh, when you go to interview. So, and um, that is kind of a summary of things you have to master um, before we tell you, okay, you can go to the job market. So that is the kind of kind of exam because first you do it in writing, and then you after we approve um, the written clearance, then you show up. And I mean, in Skype, for example, and uh, we want to see the performance. We want to, to make sure you can nicely tell the stories so you can go and actually get a job. So that, that is the way of um, doing the tests. Um, I want to complete the course faster. Would I have to pay the normal tuition and watch the recordings of previous classes? Uh, we call it, um, if you look at the, if you look at the website, he says individualized curriculum, individualized curriculum. So we uh, build your specific path using recordings, using uh, live classes. For example, projects, we, we're gonna do two projects, a web-based application and um, mobile application. Projects, it's better uh, if you do them, um, in in real life, you know, environment, rather than watching them recorded. So we are we are combining what you can do in your own pace with something we can do in the class, and uh, we can um, we can help you in in making making it faster. Um, doesn't doesn't impact tuition in in uh, any way, and honestly, it, it uh, takes more time on our side. So because we will. I pay personal attention to you, so there is there is really no no reason for for uh, discounting that work. Actually, we are not making it more expensive. 
even though it, it requires some effort on our side, but we really appreciate enthusiasm of those who want to go to the job market sooner rather than later. So that is why. Okay. The, that course will be entirely in English, yes. And actually, English is the language of the chats. So we do not uh, write anything in chats in, in Russian because maybe 95% of you here are Russian speakers, but we, we, have, we have people who do not speak Russian. Um, okay. Just making sure we are okay. Oh. Okay, so guys, I I think we can move. Um, um, I reconnected to the webinar using the link, and it is showing that webinar has ended. Um, that is the feature of uh, that is the feature of the software we are using. I tried to kind of set up it for, for differently, but. Uh, it allows you to join within one hour after I send an invitation. Today, I sent that invitation uh, earlier. Normally, I will send it maybe 15 minutes before the class, so to, to allow others you know, to join. Uh, is it possible to pay for the course in installments? Uh, we might consider certain uh, situations, definitely. Uh, Definitely, we do not want to be in a situation to put people in a situation in which they cannot join the program simply because of uh, uh, not being able to to pay the tuition at once. We, we might we might uh, come to let's say individual individualized schedule schedule for you. We, we can do it. We can do it. Okay. Um, it happens. I would say it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it happens. Yeah. Um, individualized curriculum. So, guys, um, I think we are done with that first part. With that first part, we ask the questions, and now we can go to the PowerPoint, which I have for you here. Okay, let's see, that is the first time, guys, I'm, I'm using that stuff the first time in my life, so, um, <laughs> and again, I to, as I told you, I, I do appreciate your help um, in um, imp uh, improving the content of the presentation. So, let me see, so welcome, welcome to the class. And a couple of words about myself. So I, I'm, I have to introduce myself. So that is my name. So Mikhail Portnov, Mikhail Portnov. Um, my education. So in 1978, God knows, I, I'm 66 now. So in 1978, when I was 22, um, I've got a bachelor's degree in uh, telecommunications. And then, and I worked, uh, I did work in some organization doing digital design. And in parallel with my employment, I uh, got my uh, another degree. It was actually six year degree. And I, I did it maybe in within four years in uh, mathematics. And then um, after a while, um, I've got um, the postgraduate, I, I did go to postgraduate program in professional uh, education simply because I was working at that time uh, in uh, the educational field. So that is that is how it happened. So so you you understand that I have kind of diverse background. So it started as a very technical one. So telecommunications, electronics, uh, digital design, and mathematics, and then boom. So it is uh, education. Okay, um, let me see. Okay, and what what I did in my life professionally. So first, after the University of Telecommunications, I I did uh, digital schematics for um, telecommunication equipment. Let's put it this way. 
um, in parallel, I finished my um, master's in mathematics and um, along with master's in mathematics, I've got my degree in education. And um, so my interest was in educational field always since I remember myself and uh, I've got a job um, in a research center which developed methods of uh, fast teaching. They call it intensive instruction. So I know how to teach fast. Guys. It's kind of very unique knowledge, by the way. And uh, that, is why, that is why I went to the PhD program because I did have lots of publications and lots of uh, results and all, all that stuff. Then when Russian economy, Soviet economy, started to allow people to run their own enterprises. So I started my own um, educational research kind of organization. We developed lots of things for, how to say, for industrial enterprises, helping them to teach uh, workers much faster and uh, much more effectively than uh, they used to do that. And then we came to United States. It was 1990, very end of 1990. And uh, it, I did some kind of weird things. Actually, I was teaching. I was teaching for a couple of years, uh, typing and then uh, word processing, uh, something simple you know, in a in, in couple of business kind of schools. Um, non-profits and then I've got the job in software QA field by accident actually and um, in two years I started that school in 1994 in August of 1994 we just celebrated 28 years of the school August 20th of uh, 1994 we started that school and uh, so I'm a founder and owner and God knows uh, whatever else, uh, Portnoff Computer School, which is the first software testing school on the planet. So just, just the basic facts. Um, then um, a little bit about my QA career. Uh, why we look at that? Because it impacted dramatically uh, the way that school operates, how it came to life and how it started the operations and um early 90s um, it was time of a recession kind of severe recession bad one um, it it field was okay but <clears throat> all the other fields were suffering a lot and um, there was an influx of russian immigrants soviet immigrants at that time so and um, i was doing some teaching making pretty much no money i mean just a little bit and then friend of mine who worked as a developer, he gave me a book on C programming and uh, I used to program microprocessors before. So C programming was like a blessing to me. I said, hey, I want to do that. So and the friend brings me to the company where he works. They wanted to talk to me and they said, would you mind to do testing? I said, guys, I'm, I don't know what you mean exactly, but if you tell me what you mean, I'll do it. I mean, what's the problem? OK, let's do testing. And that is how I got my first job. And um, but I told you it was a recession there and uh, the job market was kind of hectic. Yeah. So I lost the job in maybe 10 months, uh, went to the job market first time. It was April of uh, April, May, May of 93. And um, within a week, actually, I sent five resumes, got two interviews and uh, they offered me 36K, uh, 36K. I, I did have 28. I've got 36K. In, later on, in six, seven months, they sold the company and new management gave, gave me 40K. You can't imagine what 40K meant at that time. You just cannot imagine how much. I purchased a condo. M making 40K, I purchased a condo in Mountain View. Uh, in the very center of Silicon Valley. It was a uh, two bedroom, two bus, 1,200 square feet, 130,000. I gave, uh, I paid 10,000 down payment, okay? And, and I've got that, that uh, condo, which is uh, worth 1 million now. 
I just, I just want you to understand what what time it was. And um, but again, there was some restructuring. I lost the job again, and um, it was probably April or May of '94. And I've got a job with Borland. Borland was, I would say, pretty much like Facebook today. It was uh, maybe number three company in software sales at the time. It was 35 bucks per hour. It was a contract, so which is much, much better than 40K. And um, what else? And um, the job market changed in between 93 and 94, it changed. Instead of uh, sending five resumes a week, I was able to send 20 resumes a day, a day. So, um, and I said, wow, so that is an opportunity where I cannot keep it for myself. Let's start a school. And in August of uh, August 20th of 1994, we, we, I started that school. And um, I worked um, as a QA manager after that. And I worked for a glorious startup called Broad Vision. Later on, it was my last job in the field because the school was growing up so fast. I, I just couldn't keep two jobs. And in uh, early days of 96, I uh, left uh, Broad Vision and uh, started to do that school on a full-time basis. And a um, uh, uh, couple of kind of uh, things here. So my career started in 1992. And most of the people, I mean, in the field, in the industry, didn't know about the existence of uh, QA uh, profession at that time. So it was very beginning. So software care profession was born in early 90s, in early 90s. So today uh, it is maybe, let's say, 30 years old, so it's not, not that new. But imagine 90, when we started the school, 94, 95, 96, nobody knows it exists. You know, developers don't know it exists. Okay, so I just couldn't keep the Think for myself. I mean, it was so big, and uh, I've seen so many people around, uh, educated, you know, uh, hardworking uh, people who couldn't apply themselves. So, and I said, I have to do something. So that is how that school started. And um, what uh, that slide says, what is unique in QA? Um, I would say that is exactly what was unique in QA uh, 28 years ago when when I started that school. Same thing. So it is easy to learn. Number one, it is easy to learn means uh, you still have to put some hard work, but um, it doesn't take to have computer science degree. It doesn't really have to have any degree. It, it, it takes to be a user. I mean, decent, um, decent user, not even power user. But, but in today's world, pretty much everybody is a user of social networks, browsers, uh, emails and different things. So. Uh, comparing to 93, 90, 94, 95, 96, when people, uh, they were coming, uh, having no computer, they asked me, should I buy a computer, you know, to, to study that. Yeah. In 98, I told them, you cannot go to the job market unless you have an email. They didn't have email. So, guys, you are pretty much decent users, I mean, everybody. is. So, uh, four to six months, as a practical matter, is enough to start working. Maybe not for everybody. Maybe. God knows, four to six months, maybe 70% of you are capable uh, to start in the four, six months. Other people might need, to, let's say, two, three more months uh, to polish their skills. But uh, it is all doable. And we have many, many, many thousands of graduates uh, who I observed you know, in that process. It is absolutely doable. I mean, it will not happen by itself. It, it, it requires uh, certain hard work and focus and commitment and everything. Uh, each and everything in your life, if you want to achieve something, you will need hard work and uh, achievement uh, and hard work and commitment and focus and so on. Uh, fairly high compensation. So in today's market, we start with across the country, uh, 40 bucks per hour is typical. It could be a few bucks less, could be, could be 50. Yeah. So, but uh, prior to this, uh, prior to pandemic, I would say realistically you are looking at 30 bucks uh, across the board. 
right now I'm saying, okay, it's 40. Uh, just, just to start. And um, you might, I, I, I see lots, uh, lots of people who would move from 40 bucks to, let's say, 120, 30, 40, 50 K a year within, um, let's say, one, in between one and two years. It might take five years. It depends how you prog progress in that direction. But if you want to, if you um, commit to that, so it exists. It's all it's all yours, not for asking, but for um, doing what it takes to be there. And it is all doable. Um, I remember time when the, the jobs like that existed in just a couple of uh, places, such as uh, Silicon Valley, New York, maybe Chicago, Los Angeles, uh, mostly in Silicon Valley. Now it is, first of all, it's all over the United States. It is all over the, uh, Canada. It's all over the Europe. We have graduates in pretty much each and every European country. And uh, I'm not even talking about countries of former Soviet Union, where we have a lot. But each and every European country, we have um, our graduates working. Um, and uh, it is my observation that in, that in Canada and Europe, they need less time to, to get a job compared to US. So maybe two, three weeks and they are working. Um, and uh, now, uh, now we have um, remote jobs. Yeah, so it is number eight, position number eight in my list. You have remote jobs. You do, if you live in Iowa, you don't need it. Do not need a job in Iowa. So you might get a job in San Francisco or Miami or Los Angeles or New York. So which is kind of new thing, uh, relatively new thing. Um, you can start with relatively low technical skill level, position number five. Relatively low. It doesn't mean you shouldn't know anything, but you don't you don't need too much. Um, you don't need a lot. You don't need to spend a year or two or three you know, taking technical classes until you get to the entry point. Not really. Uh, and um, that is specific to software testing because software testing um, is about two things. I mean, when, when they look at you, one thing is what you can do technically, and another thing is what you can do as an individual. So maturity level, attention to detail, having some uh, professional uh, background, uh, which might help. Um, for example, if, if that software is for, uh, let's say, accounting, your accounting background helps, th that kind. So, um, that is why and when they when they give you the first job that for 40 bucks per hour job they do not expect you to be technically savvy okay they they expect you to be technically okay to do that job okay which most of you are already so most of you are already uh technically okay to do that job um we still have to learn the profession Age doesn't work against you. The oldest one here was uh, 67 years old. Okay. Uh, I would say that in uh, remote jobs uh, market, so the age is even less important. Uh, so you do, you do not come to the office, you do not sit across the people with, uh, you know, demonstrating them your age. Yeah? So you are on the screen of whatever, whatever, uh, tools they use, Skype or Zoom. Um, whatever degree or no degree you have is fine. Most of the people working in the field do have some uh, college level degree, university level degree, bachelor's or master's, but most of them are not coming from computer science background and uh, not even any engineering background. It could be business, economics, it could be teaching, it could be political science, it could be anything. So as long as you have common sense and hard work, so you can you can do the job and be very successful. Um, and there are no universities, no colleges uh, offering degrees in software QA. Means you do not compete with people who have bachelors in software testing or quality assurance, master's degree in software testing or quality assurance. There is no competition like that. It is simple. It is simple. If I go, if I decide to go to the electronics again, 
guys, I will compete with people who do have degrees in electrical engineering and electronics and that kind. Okay, I will not compete with people who have degrees in mathematics. They, they cannot compete. If the work is about electronics, mathematicians cannot compete. They don't know electronics. Yeah. So it's very narrow in terms of uh, education you should uh, have to be able uh, to do the job to be considered for employment. Okay. So guys, let me. Mm -hmm. Let me look at you. Um, any questions so far? Mm. Uh, if I will want to join the European class, can I do that? You can start with this one, and then you, there is no limit. You can go to European class, and you can combine uh, September 6 and European class, or you can just move completely to European class. There is no limit. Yeah. It's like you have a subscription. You pay one time, and you have a lifetime subscription for whatever happens in, in the class. Link doesn't work. Webinar has ended. Because you uh, either you came too late or you kind of you are outside of the time frame. Yeah. Okay. Um, so no questions, guys. Okay, let's keep going. Um, since I, I told you that is the first time I'm using that presentation, so I'm I just I just want to see if you have any questions so I can improve that. So what's unique in QA? Uh, what about English level? Uh, first of all, guys, I would say in my experience, out of 10 people who would say, you know what, my English is not good enough. Okay, Out of 10 people, eight are perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. If you have any doubts about English, call me on Skype. I will. It will take me one minute to tell you where you are. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I will tell you exactly where you are. So you make your decision. Okay. Um, I never lie, by the way, and uh, I, I can tell you more. When I say the truth, when I tell the truth, lots of people don't believe me because it doesn't, it's too good to be true, you know, but since we deal with it on an everyday basis, so, okay, I, I get used to that. Um, you have to be functional at work uh, or interview. So you go to an interview, you have to be functional. You start working, you have to be functional. So you have to understand questions, you have to answer the questions, and in our class, we practice with answering most uh, frequently asked interview questions. You remember the, the clearance, I told you about the clearance, 12 questions, so we will practice. We will make sure that those 12 questions, you answer like that. Um, we have a recorded class in Russian. Uh, it's free, actually. Uh, I mean, it's open source. We have a recorded class with... Uh, Russian and English subtitles. That is the European class, which we did uh, in February. I mean, started in February. So each and every session um, has English and Russian subtitles. So if you want that kind of thing, we have it available for you. So if it, it might help you to kind of um, improve your English um, needed to, to take the class. Um, yeah, and uh, morning time, October 24 class with Russian language support will be available to your class students. Okay, that is, that is about English. Uh, and I can tell you guys, um, re, uh, let's say if you come and repeat that class two times or three times, okay, you will get 10 times more in uh, terms of your English compared to going to City College and uh, uh, doing what they... Uh, what they want you to do in, in, in City College, because it will not make you better in terms of passing an interview or doing the job. So uh, the professional kind of, pro when you limit that um, language exposure to the professional field, so it's much easier rather than grabbing the in, entirety of uh, English, you know, no matter what the uh, subject matter is about. Why us? I like that one. Uh, why you want to be my student? That is, I have probably have to change the title. Why you want to be my student? So we are the very first software uh, testing school in the world. And uh, I would say most of the people who I know 
um, and, and who are trying to compete uh, have uh, three, four, no more than five years of experience in that stuff. So 28 years uh, versus two or three or four, and most of them are my graduates actually. And um, so the word experience, here yeah, I made it red. So we have experience. It's not just about 28 years of something, it's about experience. And experience could be measured in number of years and experience could be measured in number of graduates. So nobody, I mean, all of them together, you know, might not be comparable to what we have. So, that, I mean, you do not see anything like that <clears throat> anywhere, in my opinion. Um, the most affordable <clears throat> online program, so you, you pay 1500 for 100 hours. When I look at our closest uh, competitors, they do not teach 100 hours, they teach 40, maybe 50 hours. And there is one gentleman nearby who charges 2000 and he teaches in Russian and doesn't help with resume. There is another one which charges 3500 in Los Angeles, and there is one in, in Florida which charges 4200 4200 So we are much cheaper, and um, that is why in January of next year, so uh, our course, instead of 1500 we will uh, increase the price to, to 20 because it, it looks ridiculous to, to many people. They ask why it's, it's so cheap. Maybe there is no value there. You know, We don't want to, to look ridiculous. So we are the most affordable one. And you can repeat the class on unlimited basis. Some, some programs will allow you to repeat the class maybe once. So in our situation, you can repeat them as long as you need them. We have people who, are, who have been working for a couple of years already. And they are still, I don't know why. They are still in that extra chat because sometimes some topics, some whatever, they come and they listen. Okay, I, I don't care. I mean, it doesn't cost me more money. You know? And if they want to. Uh, so we make sure you get a job. That is the idea. You can, why you can re repeat the class? Because we want you to get the job. The class is not how we make money. We make money when you get a job. And... Uh, we do not advertise. I mean, really, you, zero advertisement. Um, so we do not go to YouTube bloggers. We do not go to Facebook. We do not go to any platform to, to advertise. And uh, guys, let me look at you. Let me look at you. Um, any Guys, um, how did you come? How did you find out about us? Yeah, 16 people, 19, 20 people. Okay, how did you find out? So probably friend, okay. Uh, you might, YouTube, I have I have YouTube channel, definitely. Lots of people uh, come to, but it's not, it's not an advertisement. I'm a blogger, I'm a real blogger. So I mean, I mean I'm, um, so uh, family member, friend, former student. Yeah, you know someone who graduated from here or you know someone who knows someone or you go to my YouTube channel and you see tons of people, I mean, crowds of people who graduated from, from that school. You see how, uh, you see our uh, campus students, how they celebrate things and how they socialize and so on. Uh, so uh, again, I, did, I didn't pay anybody to advertise me outside of our circle. So if you if your husband watches my YouTube channel, so you are in my circle. So I didn't I, I do not pay money to bring you to that classroom. So that is why you are not paying for uh, the advertisement. Um, as far as I know, okay, it's my, my to my expertise uh, to bring one student to the class. If if we go through advertisement, and it's not just advertisement, it is also people who are processing the uh, you know those who call and email and so on some people are involved, uh, it, it costs pretty much $1,000. So if I would start advertising, uh, it, it will be $1,000 more just to, to pay for advertising. So, but we are, we are different types. So you are here because we have reputation for success, not because we are paying 
uh, to find strangers uh, who have no idea, you know, what this stuff is about, and then we bullshit them. We, we don't do that. Um, uh, and then you then belong to a huge network, many, many, many thousands of graduates who are working, who are hiring managers, not just many managers, leads, people who are interviewing you. So, and we are, we have US and international brand name recognition. So, and uh, means wherever you go, uh, there is some network, there is some support, there is some appreciation and so on. And um, so we started that bootcamp in May of 2011, which means we have already 11 years of uh, that online class, uh, which also has many, many details, guys, uh, which you, you have to know and uh, try and learn about it to be successful, to be effective. And number 10, I'm saying, hey, and I'm teaching your class. You know, it's not the institution where God knows who is going to teach you. Okay, so you you have access, direct access to me, and I am the, the, exactly the gentleman who started that stuff. Uh, so I'm not the one who who learned from Mikhail, you know, and now is trying to uh, mimic him or repeat him or kind of not really. So you have direct um, direct access to the Mm, original kind of stuff, not not a copy of this and that. Okay, um, Europe and countries of former so, uh, Soviet Union. Uh, we do have people here uh, from there. Um, so because of the schedule, some some folks are working with recordings only. And I can tell you maybe 20% of US students are working with recordings only because they are driving trucks, because they are doing some work, uh, working night shifts and that kind of things. So uh, in some European countries uh, or former USSR countries, it is very inconvenient. It's like 3, 4 a.m. Uh, but if you are in Kazakhstan, for example, it's, it's a very decent time. But again, we will start the uh, European time zone class where, where you can go. Um, you do not need, good thing, you do not need US visa or work permit to work remotely for US employer. If you come to US and you want to work for, uh, let's say, Google right here in Silicon Valley, you need um, employment authorization. If you do same thing from Poland, from Ukraine, from, I don't know, Germany, you do not need any work in authorization. And we live in the world of uh, um, remote work. I mean, uh, pandemic, pandemic changed the job market dramatically with you know companies and uh, individuals adjusting uh, to the um, remote work. Um, we have graduates working in most of the European countries and countries of Soviet, former Soviet Union, Emirates, I, I can give you more. I mean, outside of Europe and uh, USSR, uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, what else? Uh, Chile. God knows. I mean, really, m many, many different different places. Uh, Vietnam, Pakistan, Israel. Um, in average, Canadian and Europeans, Canadians and Europeans find jobs faster than U.S. graduates. I would say demand supply ratio is more, uh, even more favorable over there. Uh, we support your job search with projects, resumes, references, interview preparation, and so. On. Okay, so we 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 do that pretty much same way we work with U.S. Uh, students, U.S. and Canada students. Um, here is um, what software testing is about. So what is software testing? Uh, software testing uh, means you look at requirements uh, and requirements are used to develop software. So first we have requirements, then developers take the requirements and develop that software. And uh, some people, they are called software testers. 
uh, they look at the requirement and they look what developer at what developers did and they compare. So basically, software testing is uh, about comparing the actual uh, software product um, against ideal, against intended software product, and we learn about intended product from requirement. So we do not compare that against our uh, kind of personal idea of what good stuff is about. No, there are requirements and we compare against requirement. And um, the activities uh, involved in that process are, so first of all, you learn the, the product. You, you have to know the requirement. Then you do some ad hoc exploratory testing means you, you, you play with that software without any specific elaborated plan. Just kind of, what is that? What is this? Okay. Then uh, testers would produce test documentation. Um, they kind of document the protocol of, of testing. So each and, each and every time you start testing the same thing, you follow the same protocol, which, which is called test cases. So test case by test case by test case. Um, it allows to make your testing more reliable. Okay, So each and every time you do exact same thing. Uh, then, then, so you plan for testing, you execute test cases called structured testing. So when you just execute, uh, some people automate test cases. It's, it's also a part of the job, but normally people specialize. Those who automate, normally all they do is automation. But it could be a combo, combination of things. Uh, you find the bug, you write a bug report. Um, then developer fixes the bug and says it's fixed, and you go and make sure it's fixed. And in today's world, since we are all working in uh, agile um, environment, development environment, so you have to understand the mm, that environment. We have to operate in that environment. So we uh, work in that environment. We go to meetings. We kind of um, I call it rituals. So you have to follow the rituals. There, there are some rituals. So that is what testers do at work. And that is what we learn in our class. So you learn, um, and um, the big one says, the, to get a job you need. Yeah, you, to get a job uh, you need. Learn how to do test, uh, test cases. Same thing as how to test. If you if you know how to test, you can write test cases. If you can write test cases, you know how to test. So uh, you learn how to test. You learn how to report bugs, which is not a big deal at all. Uh, you can talk about the projects in your resume. It's not enough to have a project in your resume. You have to talk about it. That is why we have that clearance. We practice the talking. And um, you have to follow the job search guidelines, which I give you. If you deviate from my guidelines 10%, you're going to lose 90% of your marketability. Okay, that is why, guys, uh, it's very important to follow the guidelines. And we will practice it in uh, following guidelines. Maybe at that point, some of you have questions. Guys, any questions so far? Do you have recording uh, classes with Russian software? Yes, I told you that. I, I Sure. Sure. We did have that class in February, and it comes with Russian subtitles and, and English subtitles. You can choose. Um, can we work from home after finishing the course? Uh, I would say most of the people, I mean, pretty much all of them, not 100%, maybe 90%, so uh, at the moment are working from home. That, that is what's happening in, in the industry. Just, just the way it, it, it works because of the pandemic. Prior to pandemic, it wasn't like that. Um, uh, other schools try to hard sell by annoying follow up calls. That that is why it costs money. That is why it's expensive. They have to, I mean, they have expense, you know, to pay for the labor. So people call you and, and so on. Um, I can feel that it's the best place to learn. I agree. Do you provide contacts for the employer that is? Can you confirm the work experience? Um, look, you will learn how to get a job. 
you might have some idea right now, but the chances that your idea is productive are very low. Let me tell you that from experience. I learned that from experience. So forget about what you think about looking for a job. Just I told you we have a video where we talk about this stuff. We have five sessions on job search in that class. <clears throat> I will teach you that stuff uh, because what what you just said really makes no sense to me because um, we teach you things which are fifty times more effective. So you don't you don't need to do that. Uh, can someone enroll in the class from India as well? Sure. I mean, why not? If yes, is the remote jobs are available to take? Um, so first of all, I think there are, are plenty of jobs in India itself. Then I don't know about uh, the time zones and uh, how how convenient or inconvenient it might be to work remotely from India, you know, in the United States. But why not? I mean, we, we see people getting jobs in. Uh, uh, U.S. market uh, since pre pretty much all my students are either in countries of former Soviet Union or in uh, mm. Europe, so they get U.S. jobs from from those countries. Uh, or it might look like, let's say, you are in Germany and you get a job in, uh, let's say, in a firm which is located in Czech Republic, but that firm is a branch of American company. So you stay in Germany and you work for US company through the branch of that company in Prague. So that kind. Um, and again, the more experience you have, the more cool stuff you can put in your resume. So the more choices you have. If you have no choices, you, you don't care. Take take whatever the job in, in the field and maybe in six months you, you move. Don't keep it for too long, move and move and move you make a couple of moves and you are much uh, better you know positioned to go uh, for the next level do you have recording classes with russian subtitles i just answered yeah yeah um if i understand everything you have said so far does it mean my english is enough i just ask not to waste your time <laughs> When I look at your writing, it is uh, pretty much close to perfect. But um, if uh, if you express yourself, you know, nicely, so if you can, if you understand my uh, what I'm saying, so it means you understand maybe 99% of the market. Yeah? If you can understand me, and if you can uh, express yourself, uh, answer questions, tell me about yourself, why you want to be in QA, and blah blah blah. So. So far, I mean, again, based based on your writing skills, I do not see any problem. Uh, lots of people uh, have uh, screaming, you know, problems when they uh, put in writing a couple of words. So it's not your case. Do you think four months is enough to learn automation testing? It depends on what's your background, what's your abilities, technical abilities, what is uh, who is teaching you. Uh, overall, four months. I mean, on campus we have a test automation boot camp, which takes exactly four months. And uh, I was uh, videotaping it myself in in a classroom environment. And I would say, out of twenty people in the class, uh, maybe fifteen got a job within a month. But they, most of them, were uh, working uh, in the manual QA. They just wanted to upgrade you know, their skills. Yeah, four months is, is enough. If you are ready, four months is enough. If you are not ready, maybe one year is not enough. Uh, do you help after the course to find a job in Canada too? The same way we do that in, um, in the United States. So we have, I wouldn't say to many, many Canadians, but in each and every class we have maybe five, maybe 10, quite a few. We have people from Toronto and Montreal and Vancouver and Calgary. I would say Toronto is uh, uh, is the ideal market. I mean, ideal. You cannot. It cannot be better than uh, Toronto job market. But 
still, you know, Montreal and Vancouver, even Calgary are, are pretty much okay. And whatever we teach in terms of profession, whatever we teach in, in terms of job search, uh, it, it is absolutely applicable to Canada and actually to Europe too. Can I become an automation after this course or SDET? Uh, you might consider that course to be the first step. Uh, to automate testing, you have to be in testing business already. You cannot automate something you have no idea about. So that is the first step. And then we have a boot camp in, uh, on campus here. It will cost you 1700 I mean, whatever you take on, on boot camp comes with a su substantial discount. So instead of 2400 you will pay 1700 and um, so, and they have, uh, I mean, the best bootcamp on test automation ever. The guy who teaches that bootcamp is the director of development for Oracle. And another lady, she, uh, she, he teaches the uh, Java, automation with Java, and there's another lady who teaches uh, automation with Python. Uh, she is a big shot, I mean, test automation guru working for Disney. And actually, she hires lots of people out of that class uh, to her team. So, I, I mean, you, it can, cannot be better. But our class is not about automation. Automation is uh, something uh, which is uh, as a practical matter, is uh, available to maybe 15% of you who can go and get a job in uh, manual testing. So let's say out of 100 people who might take the class and get a job in manual testing, maybe 15 or 20, might start with automation. See what I mean? That is why we are saying this is the step one. And out of 100 people who take the step one, maybe 15 people or 20 people will make the step two, at least uh, in the very near future. Others might do that uh, in a year or two or three at any time and so on. What does it mean references? Employer will call you. They might call, they might email, they might send a link to some online forum. Yeah, but they contact us. Why is it easier for people from Europe or post-USSR countries to get a job? I didn't say post-USSR. I said Canada and Europe. I didn't say anything about uh, post-USSR. Uh, the demand and supply, just. Um, I was at work and missed the lecture. Is there a link for me to watch it? Yes, there's going to be a link. Sorry, this class is not automation class, right? This class is not the automation class. We do have 20 hours of coding and automation, but we do not position you to get a test automation job after that class. It is not the purpose. Uh, could you please clarify, can I visit live classes if I choose individualized curriculum? It is the same process. Yes. Uh, if you go for individualized curriculum, uh, everything is at your fingertips. So we just discuss what you take with the class, what you do on your own using recordings. Uh, you have access to everything, whatever happened before, whatever is happening right now, whatever will happen in the future. You have total access to everything. A bootcamp for automation, is it online? Yes, it is online, yes. Are the, um, there is a relatively small group of people there. It is not going to be 100 people or even 50, so maybe 35, maybe 40, that kind, no more than 40 people. Are the skills you teach applicable to cryptocurrency industry? Uh, when it comes to software development, Okay, so there is a language, let's say Java, okay? and they develop certain application in Java. That application might be used in cryptocurrency industry, in medical field, in uh, military applications. It might be used in, I don't know, social networks. And so industry doesn't decide anything. So we have software development process. So developers are... Uh, programming okay and then we have testers who are working next to them making sure that what they do is up to the requirements so for cryptocurrency industry there are going to be cryptocurrency requirements and they're going to be developers implementing the cryptocurrency requirements and then 
uh, testers uh, testing that stuff definitely but i wouldn't really uh, i wouldn't go for a career change specifically to be in cryptocurrency industry from the very first step so you get a job and then another and so you you grow professionally maybe it takes three years four years five years to become someone who can really choose what he or she wants okay so, it's, so the more the more skills you have the more you are in a position to to, to choose english is the primary language for writing test cases the only language to write test cases can test cases be written in different languages once we learn how to write them in english so we can be employed by a non-us company or oh, definitely i, I mean um, many non-us companies still are doing uh, doing uh, documentation in english but yeah but definitely you you just uh, come to the company and if you speak the language you know, they use which is not English, so you just write test cases. Uh, is the work of manual tester relevant in our time? It's up to you. I mean, really, if you don't want it, you don't want it. But yeah, I mean, thousands of people, thousands upon thousands of people just graduate of different programs, get uh, that job, you know, at 40 bucks per hour. Uh, now it's your choice. Do you want that? Do you, I mean, really. How long will lesson be? Guys, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out. Yes. Um, technically, it, it we are supposed to be to talk for an hour, for one hour. So, but since I like to talk and I like to I I, I want to answer your question. So whatever time it takes. Uh, um, can you also help to find a job in Europe? The same way as we do that in US and, and Canada there is no difference do i need to know any programming languages for this course no would you advise individuals who have basic python or javascript to take a boot camp on automation along with this class i won't do it in parallel i would do one class and then another one uh, in the ideal world i would take the class get a job and then take automation class in parallel with the job so you want the the clock you know ticking you you want your experience to start you know so and then you you will improve for the rest of your life you will take classes for the rest of your life see what i mean start working and then take the class that is that is the ideal situation as i would uh, suggest i thought this course is about automation testing so you don't have this exactly course online only in the bootcamp look uh, I didn't didn't have didn't provide any indication of the class being in automation. I I did the opposite. I I put what's uh, I mean I publish on the website what's in the class, how many hours of this and that, and um, I don't know what to say. Is it really forty bucks from the start or maybe less? Could be less, uh, but mm, let's say it is much more probable to be more than 40 rather than being less than 40. let's put it this way this current market how long on average does it take to get a job after the course um it depends on certain things which i do not control uh, what how exactly you look for a job um what are your communication skills and uh, certain personality personality things you know but uh, i would say if you follow the steps if you follow the instructions if you look for a job with me okay you do not listen to idiots uh, just listen to me uh anywhere in between two weeks and two months uh is where the majority of people get a job if they follow the rules of the game okay if you don't follow the rules god knows and I, i'm not really in a position to to advise I'm losing sound. Sorry. Um, okay, it is not what we discuss here, but you, you might look at the recording later on. Guys, let me see if I have any any more slides left. So what we learned: software testing methodology, web and mobile, and um, how to do um, 
test cases and other test documentation, how to work with bug reports. We do uh, two projects, web and mobile, uh, five sessions on how to get a job. Um, we also have, if, if you want to kind of reinforce your skills, we have a one month bootcamp, which is not automation, but which is a project. And there is an application which is being tested in a relatively small group of 20 people. Um, uh, where um, we use all the tools and uh, so it some people want it some people don't want it it costs 500 bucks and uh, for for a month you are uh, you are going to be involved in software testing uh, on, on a full-time basis under supervision of one of our teachers don't don't think about it right now when it comes closer to that so you you will know the teacher she teaches uh, um, mobile stuff here, and uh, you will you will decide if you want that. Um, gray box testing with Unix, SQL, REST API. Okay. Fundamentals of test automation. Some very basics, just 20 hours. And um, so, guys, uh, you want you want to grow, you want to get more money, you want to change your social kind of standing, your social status. So you have to change. If you want different result, you have to change. And as a school, we, we help you in that change. And we have two goals. So goal number one is you get a job. And um, uh, you, we wanted to keep the job. Get a job and keep a job. So that is that is why we are here. And what we expect from you, hard work, commitment, and trust. Okay. No trust, guys, no result. No hard work, no result. No commitment, no result. Is it clear? Keep going. Uh, course components. Uh, we actually discussed that stuff. I will, I will skip that slide. Uh, interview questions. Uh, we work uh, with um, going um, over many, many, many interview questions, which cover 95% of what you might be asked at the time of interview. And the questions are coming from the field. They are not artificial. They are being reported by a graduate going to the job market. So, and when we look at the job, job preparation, so we are focusing on US and Canada job market, but I would say that European job, mar job market is not any different. Nobody ever told me that it is operating differently. Um, and those questions are in your market niche. Yeah? People with uh, not five years, not 10 years, not 15 years of experience, just people like you. Okay? So we have those questions and we give you the answers and we make sure you master the answers. And we have quizzes and um, everything. So we, we make sure you can answer the questions. But again, we cannot do it without you. So you have to learn the answers. We give you the answers, you just have to learn them. It, it looks like we are done with the with the PowerPoint. Good, so uh, I'm seeing, uh, so I'm just looking at the, how much time it took. Guys, um, let me let me go to the homework maybe. So what we want you to do in between today and Thursday, we want you to watch the James Beck video. If you didn't watch it uh, before, watch the James Beck video. It it helps you to understand the software testing industry and subscribe to, subscribe to our accounts. And I didn't put it here, but actually you can go to the, um, where is that? Uh, you can go to the FAQ, no? No. Mm. Okay, you can go to FAQ page, the portnov.net ask, and uh, you might, you have James Beck video here. You, you're going to watch it anyway. Uh, watch that video on automation. It's a, it's a very first session on automation and give you some idea what's automation. Um, should you go for html i i wouldn't say so those of you who understand who speak russian you can you can watch that video which 
under, uh, which talks about the um, profession and uh, the um, job market. But again, it's not. It is not something which is really must. The the last part. So okay, watch James Beck video, and um, I will post the today's sessions session recording right here, right here. Okay, and notes, my notepad file. So it would be a good idea if you watch it again, kind of refresh and so on. And you have you have some time. So in between Tuesday and uh, Thursday night, you have some time. Okay. And uh, I think we are we are done pretty much. Uh, schedule uh, we we did we did that b before. I mean uh, there is a link on the schedule. Here is the link. You you can see the schedule. It's right here. Um, um, the position that we would be seeking after the course is junior QA. Uh, again, we will learn how to look for for a job. And um, looking at your question right now, I would say uh, clear up your mind, erase completely what you have there. Okay. As long as you will ask questions like that, you're going to be in some trouble. Okay. We will teach you. We will teach you. One month bootcamp is online. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, tell about the schedule. Okay. I, I did show you. Uh, anything here? No. Okay, trial, final. Okay, so guys, I think we are done. Um, thank you very much for uh, joining me today. And um, I can tell you what we're going to do next time. So next time, Thursday, we will go over uh, five or six different functionalities let's say login password you know different functionalities which are by the way common interview questions and we will discuss how to test them we will uh, look at the requirements we will create test cases as many as we are capable you know to do within maybe hour and a half which link should i use for home study I don't know what you mean under home study. We are uh, on the uh, online home uh, page. Online home page. And uh, so what we have here is the uh, online home page. And if we look at the notepad, it is here. There is a path um, to that page. Let me save the file. And uh, again, the file will be showing up right, right here under the notes. And a recording of the video will be showing up right here. Okay. So, guys, um, thank you very much. It is my uh, pleasure and honor to uh, be with you today. And we had over 300 people and still have over 300 people in that conversation. So, I'll talk to you Thursday next week oh i'm sorry that'd be thursday september 8th thank you